Ceramic causing catastrophic collapse, Google's glitchy guardianship, gravely gutted gadgets, and how that fundamentally fouls files that bamboo, bamboo, foliage, is forging. All this and more, Print Fix Friday, episode 183. Let's get into it. Starting off with my continued trials and tribulations with the Chidi Plus 4. I had a pretty serious heater issue with the old hot end where it would just keep breaking heaters. So I bought a brand new hot end, which came with an upgraded nozzle. These upgraded nozzles utilize a ceramic heat break rather than the original steel one that was used with my early unit. What I didn't realize is that the ceramic is incredibly brittle and can break off at a moment's notice, even in the middle of a print. I came back to a print that was completely globbed over the hot end and ultimately created a huge issue for me because as you notice in this first photo, I'm holding the nozzle. I'm missing the heat break. The heat break is still in the printer. That's been a fun one to deal with. Now, thankfully I had ordered a spare nozzle but this doesn't solve the problem as to why this is occurring. We know what's going on here is that the nozzle at some point is slamming into something and it is causing a crack in that ceramic, which with enough back pressure causes the filament to just flow out of that ceramic because, well, you've now lost your heat break. They changed from the steel to the ceramic initially because the steel causes heat creep on lower temperature filaments such as PETG and PLA, which is obviously a bit of a problem if that's the kind of things you print with. So I had to go back to the steel nozzle for a bit until I could basically overnight a brand new nozzle. During this process, I started to reach out to Chidi Support, who is going to replace the parts, but it doesn't solve the problem. Yes, the replacement parts are great. Whenever they arrive, I'm sure they're going to be good, but it doesn't solve the problem. Traditionally, what we can see is that this is caused by the PEI wiper plate in the back of the machine. In fact, right behind the nozzle, you can see it. Let's take a look at my reaction to this and uh, see what I got to say here. That's supposed to be one piece. Thankfully, I still have the bad nozzle. It's an old steel heat break nozzle that they did before they moved over to the ceramic. But the main issue is this white plate back here ends up catching the side of the nozzle, which will crack delicate ceramic. The steel heat break is known for heat creep issues. But I can kind of tell why. Look how little of the fan actually blows across the hot end itself. There's just stuff on this plus four that doesn't make sense to me. This plate back here is one of them. I'm just going to completely remove it by just forcing it down. But that shouldn't happen, especially not on a $20 nozzle. Cheaty, guys. We gotta do better. And this is one of those things where it's like, oh, you thought Revos were delicate? Oh, you thought bamboos were delicate? This is literally made of ceramic. It doesn't bend, period. It just shatters. And of course, now I had to deal with all this extra black PETG everywhere, even like up into the areas of the heat break. Chidi did send over a Google Drive link, which included this video. Let's take a watch. This is the issue that they believe is happening where the machine is colliding with that PEI wiper plate. To solve it, you gotta do all of this work. And from here, basically you tighten the screws and you're supposedly good. I had already solved my problem before they sent this to me by super gluing that entire thing down. I did eventually pop off the PEI plate and torque those screws as far as I could. The printer doesn't need to wipe. There's no reason for this. And yes, it means there's less garbage on the first layer, but I don't care. A brim takes care of this. A purge line takes care of this. It's not a problem. The machine doesn't need this feature and it only creates potential problems in the future. As you know, this isn't my first kind of game breaking problem with the plus four. The first one being that ridiculous SSR relay board, which got so hot, it could conceivably catch fire in some instances and certainly create a hazard long-term. And while Chidi has addressed this, 
I'm gonna pass this off to Chidi as well to say, what can we do to solve this? This printer so far has been a pretty good machine outside of these two fundamentally game-breaking problems and I wish it could be better because I do really like it. The chamber heater is nice, although I do wish that it would automatically turn on the rear vent when the chamber got too hot because that's a pain in the butt right now. If I want to keep the chamber at 47, the bed goes to 72 and the chamber will go above 47 degrees Celsius if the bed is left at 72 Celsius. You can't stop it. Recently, we actually ended up buying a thermal camera to make sure issues like this don't happen anymore. And I did a live stream of it. We'll card to it where, yes, we, we did go inside and show you the cat. You're welcome. And if that's not worth a like and subscribe, I'm not certain what is. So what can be done about this issue? Well, I mean, other than go into a different metal like titanium or something like that, I'm honestly not certain. I know the Q1 Pro hot end theoretically fits on this thing. You just have to change out the connector. But realistically, it is so darn close to a bamboo hot end. At this point, I am really tempted to just do the community mod, put the bamboo hot end on it, and be done. Now, if you have access to your Chidi Plus 4, I highly recommend that you utilize the links in the description down below where there is an entire way to change and remove that wipe feature out of Clipper, period. Our machine is not networked. I haven't connected to it directly yet, so we can try to see if we can solve that problem. But an awesome member of the community, Vega, actually made a custom firmware just for us that removes that wipe feature. But again, I just super glued the wiper out of the way. And while I recognize that's not necessarily the best way to do it, it was the fastest and got us running sooner rather than later. Now, what you see here is the bone stock hot end the way that it should look. Obviously, it has some black filament all over, but I've had issues with this heater being very delicate in the past. So has this happened to you? Are you dealing with jams on your Chidi and you don't know why? Pull that nozzle and check the ceramic because I have a feeling you might be ordering yourself a new nozzle. And hey, by the way, my name's Grant and this is 3D Musketeers where we help you get your printers back to printing with purpose, even though sometimes they're my machines and I'm struggling with it and help me internet, you are my only hope. And hey, if you do like the series, give it a like, get subscribed over 180 episodes deep. Now we're coming up on that 200 mark. We'll do something special for that as well. But we're gonna move into something that is a little bit less 3D printing related but is also 3D printing related and you might not have noticed it. We saw in the Chromecast community, the Chromecast Gen 2 and Chromecast Audio. In my opinion, the Chromecast Audio is the best wireless audio device on the market because it does allow for lossless streaming via Toslink, which is pretty freaking awesome. But they were bricked accidentally by Google because they let their certificate expire. And this means that if you have a Chromecast Gen 2, the, the ones that look like the little circle or the Chromecast Audio, which looks very similar, they don't work right now. And Google, as of Wednesday, did release an email to Chromecast users saying, hey, oops, my bad, we're sorry. We're aware of the problem and we're working on it and not to factory reset your device. If you did factory reset your device, you will not be able to reconnect it onto your network. You won't be able to add it or do anything like that. The current solution to this is to roll back your phone or your computer, whatever device you're going to set up the Chromecast on to before when the certificate runs out, which was March 9th of 2025. Well, the Chromecast community is a little pissed off about this hundreds of different posts all about it's broken, I don't know what to do, F Chromecast, F Google, I'm going to something else. We'll link to why it's taking so long, why the key expiration thing even happened, and yes, there are some workarounds which we will link to as well. But you might be figuring out where I'm going with this, and that is Bamboo's latest software and their latest firmware, for the X1 and will eventually be the P1 series as well, where they're locking you down, removing your choices and your ability to utilize third-party software all in the name of security, which again, I firmly believe is complete and utter garbage. They have never been able to provide a real world reason with bonafide verifiable evidence stating that this is actually for security. 
And in fact, realistically, we've provided plenty of evidence to state that it is not. And if you're wondering all about that evidence, we'll card to it so you can take a look. We talked about the fact that there is a very short certificate issued for your bamboos. And if that is not updated, you will lose the ability to send print jobs to your bamboo, period. So if you update to this new firmware and you take your machine offline, you take the third party software offline, the certificate will run out sometime in December of this year. That means you will be bricked. You won't be able to access your machine and you will be forced to do it the way that I've always said to do it. Walking an SD card over to the machine and just operating it that way from the beginning. While I recognize this is a huge issue for some of you, for others, they don't care, and they're more than happy to deal with Bamboo Labs' actual control system because the machines work. That's really all they need from it. It's a hobbyist thing, not a professional thing. Professionals, obviously, a little bit more problematic there. We kind of told you so. Companies often forget to send updates for certificates. Google, like, Google forgot to do it on products that are only slightly outdated. There was never a new Chromecast audio. If there was, I'd buy it. While it's great that these 10 year old products are still functioning, it is obviously a issue with long-term sustainability. This goes the same for your bamboo 3D printers. Love to know your thoughts on this. Do you have a Chromecast that got bricked and you're wondering what the heck's going on? And uh, do you think there's any nefariousness going on here. I worry that these certificates are going to become a way for companies to basically force you to keep a product online when in reality it's not necessary, but that's a bit more tinfoil hat than I'm reasonably comfortable with at the moment. I guess refer back to this video if something actually does go wrong with these bamboo printers uh, come the winter time. 2025. Last but not least, this one is a fun one. I just got a new 3D printer. Here's a quick question. Leveling versus tramming. We've talked about this before. We say leveling, but technically it's tramming. This is a great example of the industry terminology not matching the thing that it is. Do you say a personal watercraft or do you say jet ski? Do you say facial tissue or do you say Kleenex? Do you say copy machine or do you say Xerox? Those are all examples of the colloquial name and then the actual name that it really is. This is one of those things because if you were to actually level your printer, your printer also has to be on a level table, which has to be on a level surface. Leveling is weird. What you end up doing is you get your x-axis to be perpendicular to the vertical uprights that it's on. This is for bed slingers, obviously. Once you're able to do that, you then need to adjust your build plate to be at the same distance all around from the nozzle itself. Doing everything with a angle finder here or a plumb finder in this particular instance, while they are finding that the bed is only off by 0.2 degrees, their x-axis is off by 1.96 degrees, what they're not taking into account is the actual table and the service and everything like that. This is one of those cases where the tool gives you way more information than you need. Getting your first layer right is all about how far your nozzle is away from the actual build plate itself. We did a video on this where we looked at my buddy Chuck Hellebuck's e-leveler, which makes leveling machines just like this. Very, very simple. And in fact, much faster than I was able to do with paper and more reliably too. We'll card to that video so you guys can take a look. If you want to level or tram your machine, which is leveling to itself, don't use tools like this. They're cool and it's great that you have it. I want one like that. But those tools actually give you a lot of misnomers for the machine itself. You're looking at the axes and leveling them to each other and squaring them to each other, not to the earth. You can mount printers on their sides. You can mount them on the ceiling if your name is Pooch, cause you know, why not? None of that would matter. And obviously then a plumb gauge or a angle finder is not gonna give you the metrics that you need. You care more 
that your nozzle is the same distance from the build plate at all times. Should be roughly the thickness of a sheet of paper or about 0.1 or 0.2 millimeters. You want that first layer of the texture build plate to be a little ridgy, so you want it to come up just a little bit, but a perfectly glass smooth layer on a textured build sheet is also completely acceptable. If your ruffles have ridges, you're too close, but on textured build plate, that's okay. And if there are valleys, that means you're too far. You got to bring that build plate up or the nozzle down. If you do this, be careful because you want to make sure you do it evenly on all sides. Me personally, I do it when the machine is running. There are tons of different tests out there that you can print to verify things. But remember, bringing one corner down will also angle the opposing corner and can adjust the geometry all over. It's why most modern 3D printers don't have manual bed leveling anymore. Auto bed leveling is the right way to go. It is just better. Don't get me wrong, old school is still good, but auto leveling, assuming you have a decent way to do it, is going to result in a better overall first layer, especially if you do mesh bed leveling, where you're looking at the actual layers and you're adjusting the machine to fit any waviness in the build plate itself. Manual leveling and manual tramming does not do that at all. So it's a very, very simple mistake to make, but it's an absolute, I guess, dictionary trap, if you will, for the newbies in this industry. If you do have that problem, I feel you. I've been there, done that, gotten the t-shirt, and now my shirt has cats on it, which make it infinitely better in my personal opinion. <laughs> and if you agree, hey, let me know in those comments. By the way, merch store coming soon. We have some pretty big stuff planned coming up toward the end of the month and the 1st of April for celebrating 50,000 subscribers because if the metrics work out the way they do, we'll hit 50K before then. And hey, if you want to help us get there, you're welcome to. And the awesome people listed next to me are some of our top tier patrons who have helped us get closer to the mark every single day and are supporting the efforts that we are doing here. Thank you to every one of you for what you are doing. It is greatly appreciated. Right below me will be the entire Print Fix Friday series where you can see over 180 videos of print failures and how to fix them. And actually, that will be the live stream where we played with the thermal camera because that, that was actually a lot of fun. And hey, if you made it this far in the video, you can support us for as little as a dollar a month. But hey, at the $10 tier and higher, you get to come hang out in our private Discord server. That is really all that I have for you all today. Stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always, keep making awesome. Have a good one. Mrs. Beans, what? You can come up here. Be in the video. Come on. Oh my gosh. Oh, we have a cat. We have a cat. Get a little bit of cat content in your life. And if you watch through this outro, you'll know that we're gonna be making a custom cat tree coming up and we're gonna make it so that you, the community can actually contribute things to the cat tree. And we're gonna see how the cat actually likes them because she is absolutely amazing and we love her all so dearly. So leave a like for the cat.